This is Dan's second appearance on the podcast, which I'm very excited for. Um, for those listening who might not know Dan and been living under a rock, Dan's filmography includes The Shape of Water, Nightmare Alley, John Wick 2, 3, and 4. Dan, let's get right to it. I almost feel like, first of all, congratulations on John Wick 4. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to do that. Dan, I have to. I, I almost feel like, for those who haven't seen it yet, you almost have to see it twice. Once just to appreciate the sheer beauty of the thing. Like, it's just the most beautiful action movie I have ever seen. And I'm not just saying this because we're conversing. Just from a sheer beauty of the scenes and the effort that everyone put out. Good God, Dan. It's the most gorgeous action movie I've ever seen. Fantastic. No, I'm so happy to have that feeling. Uh, you know, we did this as, you know, when you're doing a series, you know, two, three, and four, you have to do it better and better and better. So, you know, when we did number two, they have to be a little bit better than number one. And the same with number three, they must have to be better than number number two. And then when we have to do number four, Chad and Keanu invite me on a trip to... to um, to uh, oh, I just lost it for saying <laughs> to um, Germany. No, no, no. Give me one second. I just my brain is braining. Um, to Japan. Okay. And because we talked about a lot shooting a lot in Japan, and then we couldn't do that because of the COVID. Right. So the Japanese world was a very big experience for us, and the uh, inspiration for us in the beginning. And um, I think that's where. A lot of the colors coming from this coming from this Japanese inspiration world, and of course, Chad and Keanu and the production designer Kevin and myself is very much into that color palette as we did on John John Wick Number Four. Yeah, and for those listening, uh, Dan is talking about director Chad uh, Stalski. And, and and let me ask you this: Is it a collaborative effort with the three of you? A lot of the, and we'll break down a few of those beautiful I- iconic scenes. Is it a collaborative effort the entire time, Dan, with you, Keanu, and Chad? Is that how that works? No, no, it's more like, you know, Chad and the productions are Kevin and myself. It's, Keanu is not so much in, in our discussions, but of course he's, he, he's pushing the, tra- the train. But it's very much like Chad and the production designer, Kevin and myself. You know, we are talking about how the look should be. And, you know, we want to go bigger this time. So we changed the camera package. We was going with large sensors. We were going with large anamorphic lenses. Uh, to cover the sensor and we just talked about the whole concept about color the color world was a very very strong world world for us to do right you don't know um and and how long was the entire shoot dan i think it was 105 days and that's a long shoot yeah and you know we have a very little we have a small stunt unit and you know of course they help with a lot of rehearsals and stuff like that but we shot mostly the main unit yeah we shot we shot 105 days, and out of those, we have 18 weeks of shoot of nights. And 18 weeks of night shooting is like killing everybody. Like even the, even the strongest guys is getting killed there. You know, it was it was a fantastic shoot, but 18 weeks of night is tough. Yeah, and, and there's no. I mean, Dan, watching the film, I was thinking of you. I'm like, there's no way that Dan and Chad and the rest of the cast and crew didn't pour their heart into this. Like. It just look, and I'm going to be saying this a lot. It's just the look of this movie. I haven't seen anything like it before. It's like, it's yeah. stunning in every sense of the word. I'm very happy you like that, you know. Yeah. But again, we did a lot of it, but, you know, we want to do it as good as, as good as we could as we could. And, you know, Chad is, in Chad's world, there's only one way that's the best way. And of course, that's super nice as a cinematographer to work with directors that just wants to go all the way. And Chad really wants to do that, you know, and Keanu as well. That's the reason they come the fight sequence is so amazing because you know that rehearse that a lot you know keanu and chad know exactly how to shoot that uh and we just i think that is the goal is like keanu reeve really wants to do it as perfect as possible and in chad's words there's no that's only the best way and yeah. you know i love that as a cinematographer uh, it is like we, we have to do it as good as we can do yeah, yeah, and you know there there is a there's um a, I asked some questions about Keanu, but I wanted to ask you this about him off camera. You know, for those listening, Keanu Reeves is notorious for his kindness in class, off camera. Like his kindness is just legendary everywhere. Um, there's there's photos of him or, or video of him carrying up production or helping with the production, carrying stuff up the stairs. Um, do you see that off screen? Do you see that kindness on a daily basis, Dan? All the time, you know, he's a he's, he's a fantastic actor. He's a fantastic 
stunt person and he's a fantastic human being. You know, there was a small story, you know, after week number 15 or whatever it was, I was like starting to get a little bit tired and Keanu come to me one day and said, Dan, are you eating too much? Are you, are you getting enough to eat? And she said, ah, because she said, you, you, you looked a little bit burned out. So well, maybe I need some more food or whatever. And the next day he was like supporting, you know, his assistant was coming with food and nuts and all that. He's taking care of everybody. He's a really wonderful person. Wow, that's that's a that's a great story. Uh, no, it's really, and that is the way it is. You know, Dan. And the funny thing is, he's doing more with each movie the older he gets, which which is like it's almost like the reverse way of how people do things in Hollywood, right? The older they get, maybe they cut back a little bit. Like he's getting older, and he's getting he's giving even more and more, just like you and Chad and the crew, which is unbelievable, Dan. We are definitely getting older, everybody. But you know, yeah. you know he's. <laughs> <laughs> he, you know, he is just a fantastic person and a fantastic uh, actor. And you know, he just, as I said before, he wants to do it perfect. Yeah. And and, and again, you know, we, everybody on that show wants to do it as good as we can. There's no shortcuts. And a lot of that is coming from Keanu and Chad, and or everything is coming from Keanu and Chad because they want to do it as yeah. as we did. Yeah, and and I can't even imagine what a, a John Wick five would would look like if this is what four looks like. Jesus, I mean, if there is a or a spinoff or who's, something. Oh, who's who's talking about number five? Well, there's there's a lot of talk of there's a lot of talk of like you know um spinoffs and other movies and uh, I don't know. I mean, the popularity. I, I read that it's not off the table, Dan. That's what I read. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I shouldn't be reading the internet. Uh, but I don't know anything about that. But you know, let's let's enjoy this one first. Yeah, well said. Uh, and, and I really love the importance of dogs in this in this whole uh, wonderful set of movies, Dan. I really think the use of dogs is just used so beautifully. In this case, Mister Nobody's Dog. Um, just great moments when it's used. Um, and as a cinematographer, yeah. as a cinematographer, I know animals can be somewhat unpredictable. Whatever you wanted to say on that, Dan. No, you know, those dogs are really powerful dogs. And I'm personally a little bit afraid of those dogs because they're so powerful. But they're so well trained. You know, there's nothing by the way. You know, the dogs is like actors. You know, they're doing exactly what they have to do. And they're not doing more. They're not doing less. And it's, you know, the team about the dogs is just so professional. So so working with, with dogs in this kind of movie is not an issue because that, they just do what they have to do and they're well 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 trained and it's yeah, it's yeah. a pleasure to work with them the whole the whole dog team is it's a really professional team yeah and, you know and after watching this movie i talked with some uh, uh, friends who've seen the movie who were also blown away and one of the things we can't figure out dan is why a movie like this wouldn't be up for more academy award considerations from cinematography to what keanu did to what chad did to what the cast and crew did like it's like, I can't imagine going the rest of 2023 seeing a better action. Like, I don't know. I feel like, is it the genre that people aren't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel it's, this movie should receive a lot more consideration to come, come awards time. And maybe it will. I, I hope it does. I hope it will too. But, but you know, is it Academy Award is like, or all awards is like, you know, if you get them, you are proud. If you don't get them, it's like, hmm, that was a shame. Yeah. And you know, you cannot, you're not, we are not making a movie. I'm not making a movie to get awards. I'm making a movie because I think it's, great to do it and you know what's of course you, if the audience loves the movie that's super super important you know and then of course the awards is nice to get but it's not about getting awards it's about making a really good movie for the audience yeah and, and for those listening you lens uh, uh john wick two and three what was the big difference dan on four i mean you mentioned keanu earlier saying how and you too saying how exhausting it was was it the time was it what chad and you were were, were, were striving for in this case you know you wanted to make it bigger and better was was it just everything combined just exhausting to you compared to the other movies? It was not ex exhausting. It was just much more difficult to do because we shot it in two big cities. You know, when we shot two and three, it was mostly in New York. Right. Uh, and number four is like a lot of in Germany and a lot of in Paris. And that's fantastic cities and fantastic crew there. But, you know, when you have to travel from one big city to another big city, it's it's a lot of organizations there to make it right and of course it's it is she's shooting in paris it's amazing you know you're shooting it on the stairs in the sun Kirk. you're shooting sun Kirk. it's a lot of lot of practicalities there and you know to get permissions and have all these things going on it's a it's a big deal for everybody or including myself as a cinematographer it's a lot of like prep and a lot of like how are we going to do this 
Right, right. And, and, you know, before we get into specific shots, I wanted to say, I don't think enough is being made, not necessarily by you or the crew, but just by people who watch it, how really wonderful Bill Skarsgård is. Like, he is just, oh, he, an, he's an amazing actor. He's a fantastic actor. I worked with him for many years ago in Sweden. I did a movie called uh, uh, Salmon and the Oak with a director called uh, Lisa Olin. And so I know him a little bit when he was a young kid, and now he's a growing up guy. But I think all the cast in this movie is doing a fantastic performance. And of course, that's coming back to Chad. He's the choice of actors and the way he's, everybody's performing. It, it is fantastic, I think. I think and I think, the story, I think the story in this one is much stronger compared to the, number, the other movies. Yeah, and, and from, a, from a novice point of view, you know, I love cinematographers. And you're, you're one of my all-time <laughs> favorites. And, and I just... Oh, thank I, you, I, thank you. If I had to use a word to describe this movie to somebody, what makes somebody saying, "Well, why is he gushing? What makes it special?" I think the angles are something I've never seen before. Like the Osaka scene, oh my god! The the, the Osaka, um, the, the continental, unbelievable! That entire scene, the alarms, that that just that sequence alone would have made for a good movie, Dan. Yeah, no, you know, again, there's a lot of preparations, a lot of talk, and you just again, Chad is coming up with all the great ideas, and you know, Kevin and me as the production designer and the cinematography you know we're just trying to support him and support the movie and support our director as much as we can and that's a lot of like what can we do to make it better what can we do and you know i think this one is much more like a ballet between the performance you know all the action sequences like it feels much more like you're shooting a ballet comparing to you're shooting a, a martial art movie Right, right, right. And the one, the one uh, scene that I couldn't get out of my head uh, of many of them was the overhead shots of the shotgun or the gun with it's like a flamethrower, like when it kind of explodes. Like I have never seen anything like that, Dan. And, and I mean, it's it was almost surreal. I think people were just like blown away by that. Like it was just like, what I am hope I seeing? So. What, yeah, what am I seeing here? <laughs> this is this is this is next level stuff. You know, again, it's coming from Chad. Chad has this idea. Of, Let's do overhead fight sequence. And you, everybody, including myself, was like, hmm, how are we going to do this? And then, of course, you're getting into like a brainstorm about how are we going to do it, you know? Are we going to shoot on location? Are we going to shoot the studio? Are we going to, how, are we going to shoot it from a crane? Are we going to shoot it from a wire cam? So, you know, and then we decided to go from a wire cam and the stunt unit made a lot of rehearsals for that. And, you know, we, we supported about with ideas and then we spent a lot of weekends to to light that set because that's a really big set to light in one in one continuous continuous movement, and it works works out really really well. Oof, it sure did. Uh, just comment on any, on the next three. Just send whatever you want. The the Berlin nightclub scene, which is unbelievable as well. I mean, talk about another great scene. Anything you wanted to say about that scene, Dan? No, the problem not the problem, but the challenge with that was like the set was gigantic. You know, it was like. 500 meters long like 1500 feet or whatever it's like and a lot of lot of extra so you know it was a big big lighting setup that waterfalls and you're spinning lights and again we just want to try to push ourselves to the edge and i think that sequence is a really good example on that how far we can go and again the stone keanu reef and the guys was doing a fantastic job but the whole concept about the nightclub all the moving lights, all the color palettes, and then the waterfall in the middle, and then they're way ending up in a big waterfall fight sequence. And of course, the whole camera team was, we was preparing that a lot because shooting that a fight sequence on the waterfall is a, a lot of efforts there, you know, water, waterproof cameras and all the kind of stuff. Um, but when you get, when Chad starts to talk about it, it's like, Again, how the fuck are we going to do that? Excuse me, all my language. But it's just, it, it was, it's, and it's amazing because, you know, again, it, it works, it went out really well. I'm very, very happy about that sequence because it's so fantastic, I think. Yeah, it, I know it was. And um, <laughs> just, just a, a couple more here the, the scene in Paris, which was unbelievable in itself, you know. Um, just anything you wanted to say about that, Dan? No, you know, the end sequence in the movie on Sankra Kirk is shot night for day because yeah. we want to do it as a sunrise. And you know you cannot do a sunrise sequence, you know. So we shot. It's a big scene, so we shot everything night for day. So it's a big again, a, a lot of lights up there. Um, 
and we just have to figure out how to do that. And it was like the we have some big lights and cranes that just moved up, so it looks like the sun sunrise. Yeah. And in and of course visual effects is helping in the background. But again, when Kiana have been running around for like two hours in the darkness and you're just running into the sun sunset and the big sunrise in the end of the movie it's it's a, it's 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 lifting everything up yeah yeah it, th that whole stairs to the final duel uh just oh, yeah. makes yeah. just makes for some uh phenomenal uh movie making dan of all of all, all those scenes i named was there one in particular that was a bit tougher to shoot? I mean, they're all tough to shoot, I would imagine. But is there one that stands out to you as being maybe a little bit tougher than the rest, or maybe two? No, I think the the end sequence on the Sankar Kirk, the sunrise sequence there, that was, that was a very tricky one. Yeah. Uh, because if you want to shoot night for day, it's 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 a lot of footprints. It's like you know, how how do you want to have that looks like? And it was it was a challenge for everybody, was, and especially for myself as a cinematographer. It was like. I couldn't put my head around that in the beginning, uh, and but I got a really a great help for the whole crew in in Germany and France. Um, so that was it was it was great. When when you finally saw the final product, Dan, do you allow yourself to enjoy the great work you put into it? Do you allow yourself that moment of like, hey, this is this is pretty damn good? No, I try that, of course, but you know, you are uh, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm my own my own worst enemy. So you know, it's like. Oh, I could have put done, but you know, you still have to, you have to, of course you have to enjoy the work because your movie making is a teamwork. Sure. But you're always looking at your own mistakes and yeah, it is. But I'm very proud of the movie. I think it's a fantastic movie. I'm really, really proud of it. And I think the fight sequence, as I said before, it's more like shooting a ballet comparing to a battle scenes. And I think it's, I'm, I think it's great. I'm very proud. Yeah, and the movie itself is, like you're saying, it's it's like you could pause it at any time. I mean, if, if I was watching it at home, I could pause it at any time, and and that one, wherever I paused, could be could be cut out of the TV and put on the wall. That's how great the images look in that movie. I mean, so you're comparing it to a ballet. I'm comparing. I think it's a lot like art the way this thing was shot. That's why I said you know, two viewings. You know, fantastic. I'm very happy about that. But you know, as again, yeah, a lot of you know, I'm very proud of the movie. It looks fantastic, and of course, we went. The way you know we want to get much more colorful, we want to get more power. We're, we're not afraid of the black shadows and the highlight. You know, we just try to make it much more dynamic from a cinematography world. Yeah, and 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 that's that was the talk. I mean, still is the talk. People are just raving about and, and again how it looks. But that's very rarely do people come out of people will always say a movie looks beautiful. But I've never heard it like for people that just like are just average everyday moviegoers. I've never heard the the feedback like this. The I can't believe how gorgeous, like even walking out of the theater, people were just talking about this scene or that scene. You never usually hear that. I mean, I, at least I don't about, okay. about how good a movie looks. So that's a, that's another huge thing. Dan. I think that's great. Oh, thank you very much. Of course I'm proud of that. But you know, again, it's not me. It's like our, our team, you know, it's everybody's it's Chad, it's Keanu, it's production designer, my whole lighting team and my camera team, you know, we are working so well together and everybody's supporting me. Uh, and Chad. You cannot make a really good movie look a very good looking movie without a director that wants to go the same way. It's 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 a teamwork, and I love that. It's making movies a teamwork, and I think it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Dan, and there's talk that, that you know that Keanu cut out a lot of his dialogue. Um, was that important to you? Did you notice that? Did you know about that? I, that just came out recently where he cut out some of his dialogue. No, I I didn't know about that. You know, okay. I was not. I have my hands full of like. Yeah. lighting the sets <laughs> yeah yeah so i no i was not about i, I didn't knew that uh so two more last questions for you and thank you again for all this time um did you happen to see all quiet on the western front this year did you see that yeah i did that uh, yeah it's just very 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 nice and very powerful movie you know it's a very very powerful movie yeah yeah uh, i mean also a, a stunning 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 movie i mean just the way it stunning looks the way it's movie, kind of... for sure but it's so sad you know so you, it, it's a very 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 sad and very tough movie it looks fantastic yeah uh, my last question for you is what's coming up for you like i feel like you poured your heart into john wick 4 but then i'm like wait a second he's far from done <laughs> you've got a lot of you've got a lot of things going on right now you've got frankenstein with your with your good friend guillermo del toro coming you know that's in pre-production you've got the gorge that, that looks incredible you've there's you've got a lot going on how are you how are you managing all this 
you know, it's just like what I'm doing, you know, I really love to make, make movies. I really love to be a part of the world and I like to be a cinematographer. And, you know, you just have, as long as I like what I'm doing, I'm keep going. And, you know, you have to follow your heart and your instincts too. And what I like about my world, my work is like, I'm not into a special genre. I'm into a lot of different genres. But for me, it's like re the relationships between the directors for me is super important because I want to tell the director's story. I want to be support the story and the director. And that mm -hmm. is, for me, it's so important. Uh, speaking of directors, like I said, you're, work you're working with good friend Guillermo del Toro on, on Frankenstein. What can you say about Frankenstein, Dan, if anything? Uh, not too much. I just know the director. <laughs> I don't know yeah. because it's it's not, for me, it's not right away. I'm doing the course right now. Yeah. And it's amazing, uh, Scott. And it's uh, it's a really nice movie. It's a re really fantastic project. Great cast, great cast too. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, no, it's good. It's great. It's fantastic. I'm very proud of it. It's great. Dan, I am so happy for your success. I love your work. I'm so grateful to live thank in an so time much. where we have this. So, Dan, thank you for this time.